Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own Who Has to Know or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by TrueFreak89, and you can find a link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Brit. Who Has to Know? Chapter 10 Ray, aren't you coming in? Telly asked as Raelle jumped out of the back seat of her car and headed for her own house. Abigail had called Shotgun in the parking lot at school while Raelle had been too distracted to care. Yeah, shitbird. We're supposed to be hanging out tonight. Remember? said Abigail. Raelle shifted from one foot to the other as she rubbed at the back of her neck. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Mom asked me to run some errands for her after school. Raelle. Call her? Abigail huffed, her hands going to her hips as she started the other girl down. What is with you? You never hang out anymore. You're turning into a goddamn hermit. I'm sorry, we'll do something next weekend, Rael promised as she ditched her friends and disappeared into her house. She waited a few minutes to ensure the other girls were safely inside Telly's house before she slipped back out, pulling the door shut behind her and locking it. Rael had lied about doing errands for her mom. She was going to see Scylla, but she needed to pick up a few things first. She set off down the street, going a long way so as not to walk in front of Telly's house. Riel arrived at Scylla's house half an hour later, laden down with a heavy paper grocery bag she nestled in the crook of her arm as she rang the bell with her free hand. She still felt bad how she had acted over Scylla turning her down, and she wanted to make it up to the other girl. Scylla answered a few moments later. She looked bleary-eyed, like she might have been sleeping, and Riel felt a fresh wave of guilt at disturbing her. Riel? Scylla frowned as she rubbed at the corner of her eye with her sleeve. She looked cute, half asleep, cheeks flushed and hair sticking up like she just climbed out of bed. Riel bit the inside of her cheek as thoughts of waking up next to the other girl danced across her mind. Did we arrange to meet up? Uh, no, Rhea looked down as she offered out the bag she was holding. I... I brought you some stuff, to help you feel better. Oh. Scylla took the brown paper bag from Rhea and peered inside. A shy smile crept across her face as she took in the goodies inside. There were a bunch of chocolate bars, she thought she might have mentioned liking ones. Heat patches for her cramps. The kind that warmed up when stuck to skin. And the box of Scylla's favorite herbal tea. Scylla bit the inside of her lip, trying to hide her surprise at the softer, more thoughtful side of Rael. Thanks, she said, at a loss for anything else to say. Do y- do you want to come in for t- some tea? Oh, um, yeah, if you're not busy or anything, Rael asked, rocking on the balls of her feet like she had somewhere else to be. Scylla shook her head. She didn't mention she'd been napping before Rael knocked. Come in, Scylla ushered Rael in and closed the door behind her. Take a seat, I'll make the tea, she said. As Riel stood around in the hallway, looking like a spare part. Riel did as she was told and took a seat on the sofa in the living room and waited for the other girl. Scylla walked in a few minutes later, carrying a tray with two mugs of piping hot tea. Riel took hers from the tray and made a face as she took her first sip. Scylla chuckled to herself. It was clear Riel didn't like the tea, but the blonde forced herself to take a few more sips to pretend otherwise. It's quiet around here. Riel said, glancing around the room as if waiting for Byron to burst in. She hadn't known if he, or Porter, would be there. She'd taken a chance in showing up without telling Scylla first. Part of her had been worried Scylla might not answer the door to her. 
The boys are at training, and Kostya's at work. Cool. Riel cradled the mug in her hands for a while before putting it back on the tray, hoping Stella wouldn't notice she had drunk very little of it. Thank you for the tea and the chocolate and stuff. Stella brushed her hair back behind her ear. It was weird, having Riel in her house and it not be about sex. Scylla shuffled forward, trying to get back to familiar ground as she placed a hand on Riel's knee. I might be on my period, but that doesn't mean you have to miss out. No, it it's okay, Riel shook her head, and Scylla snitched her hand back like she'd been burned. No, n not that I don't want to, Riel added quickly as she took in Scylla's perturbed expression. She scratched at the back of her neck as she looked away, her cheeks flustered. I just, I, I can't wait. Ariel shrugged, and Scylla felt a surge of heat in the pit of her stomach. She leaned in, her hand going around the back of Riel's neck and her fingers slipping into Riel's hair as she kissed her. The kiss started out slow. Riel almost seemed hesitant until Scylla's tongue ran over the bottom lip. Riel's lips parted, allowing Scylla to deepen the kiss as her tongue explored the inside of the other girl's mouth. At the same time, Riel's arms snaked around Scylla's waist, pulling her onto her lap. Scylla settled there, her thighs straddling Riel's and both of her hands buried in her hair, tugging at her braids. They were still like that when Anacostia walked in on them a short while later. Shit! Anacostia spun around to give the pair some privacy as Scylla scrambled off Riel's knee and fixed her shirt. Riel's hands had started to wonder. Anacostia was used to walking in on that kind of thing. But not with Scylla. She pinched the birch of her nose. Sorry, sorry, I got off work early. I thought I'd make dinner. Does your friend want any? Um, no, thank you. Riel stood up quickly and yanked her zipper up when she realized Scylla had pulled it down at some point. Her cheeks burned with embarrassment at having her the sheriff walk in on them. I was, uh, just leaving. Scylla saw the other girl to the door while Anacostia slipped into the kitchen, trying to spare them all further embarrassment. Think she's going to shoot me? Rael asked, only half-joking. Scylla snorted, her hand landing on Rael's chest with a sense of easy familiarity that had Rael's toes curling up in her shoes. I think you're safe. Scylla bit down on her lip. Thanks for coming over. No problem, said Rael. I hope I didn't get you in trouble with Anacostia. Will she tell Porter? A lump the size of a golf ball formed at the back of Scylla's throat as she shook her head. Lying to Riel about her and Porter was getting harder and harder, especially when Riel was being so nice to her. None of this had been part of their no-strings-attached arrangement. Don't worry about it, she said and pressed a kiss to Riel's cheek. Scylla waved the other girl off before she shut the door and padded into the kitchen to find Anacostia. She was leaning against the counter with her arms crossed over her chest while she waited for the kettle to boil. Sorry for interrupting, she said. Her eyes lit up with amusement. You want to tell me what's going on there? Scylla gave a defeated sigh. Please don't tell the boys. It's none of my business, Anacostia held her hands up. But I'm sure they'd be happy for you. You've done a lot for them, Scylla. You deserve a little happiness of your own. The collar kit seems nice. Scylla couldn't help the smile that made its way to her face as she picked up a bar of the chocolate Rael had brought over. She unwrapped it, broke off a square, and popped it in her mouth before saying, She is. Rael found herself at Abigail's house on Saturday afternoon, as promised. She'd blown off a lot of plans with her best friends over the last month because of her arrangement with Scylla. It felt nice to spend time with them, even if Abigail took every opportunity to goad her about her being so absent of late. They were halfway through some Hallmark movie, which was putting Rael to sleep, when the blonde's phone pinged with a new message from Scylla. She snatched it up eagerly and tried not to break into a smile as she read Scylla's latest message, asking if she was free tonight. She wasn't. Riel was supposed to be spending the night at Abigail's house. But Scylla's next message, a picture of her bottom half clad only in black lace panties, had Riel promptly changing her plans. Sorry, guys. My mom wants me home. What? Abigail snapped, while Tally groaned and tossed a cushion she was leaning on at Riel's head. Riel dodged it with ease and pocketed her phone. She wants a family dinner, Riel lied, shoving her feet into her boots and doing up the laces while her hair hung down in her face. 
She should have felt guilty about lying to her friends. But all she could think about was Scylla in her bed. It had been almost a week since they had hooked up, and Rhea was craving the other girl like the desert craved rain. I thought your mom was on nights this week, said Telly, her big brown eyes scrutinizing Rael closely. She and Abigail weren't stupid. They had picked up on Rael's erratic behavior and uncharacteristically good moods. Change the schedule, Rael pulled her jacket on. I'll make it up to you guys, I promise. You were supposed to be making it up to us tonight, Abigail rolled her eyes and Rael felt a pang of guilt. She hovered at Abigail's bedroom door torn between going and asking Scylla if they could meet up later. Go, Abigail caved first with a dismissive wave of her hand that swept away the last of Riel's doubts. She took off, throwing another promise to hang out with them tomorrow over her shoulder and on her way out. When Riel got home, after letting Scylla know she could come over in half hour, she was surprised to see her mom in the kitchen making dinner. Hey, Mama, shouldn't you be at work by now? Maeve has asked me to swap with her. She's working tonight and I'm working tomorrow for her instead. I was just about to call and ask if you were coming home for dinner. I'm making your daddy's favorite, chicken and waffles. Sounds great, Ariel toyed with her fingers. Is it okay if Scylla comes over tonight? Of course. She's a lovely girl. She's always welcome. Thanks, Mama. Ariel pressed a kiss to her mother's cheek before bouncing off upstairs to tidy up for Scylla coming. She picked up the laundry from her floor, shoving it to the hamper in the bathroom, and she had just finished changing her sheets when there was a knock at the door. Riel raced down the stairs to get to the door before her mom. Hey, she greeted the other girl, a little out of breath. Hi, said Scylla. Her hair was down and lightly curled, and she was wearing a denim skirt over thick black tights. Riel bit back a grin. It was a far cry from the comfy clothes Scylla had worn to school all week while she was on her period. She took that, and the earlier picture of her skimpy panties, as a good sign. Riel felt almost underdressed and a little self-conscious, in a ratty old band tee and her favorite ripped jeans. She hadn't expected to see the other girl when she had dressed that morning. It was too late to change now. Come in. Riel took a step back and Scylla stepped inside. A tense silence fell over the pair as they stood staring at each other in the hallway. Rails wet her lips with her tongue as she pulled at the hem of her shirt, unsure how to ask if Scylla was there for sex, which was crazy. What else would she be there for? Hey, dear Scylla. Willa walked out of the kitchen and greeted the other girl, breaking the awkwardness between the two teens. Hi, Miss Scholar. Scylla smiled at the older woman. She liked Rael's mom, with her southern twang and easygoing demeanor. Please, it's Willa. Mrs. Scholar is my mother-in-law. Willa gave her daughter's friends a conspiratorial wink. Have you had dinner yet? There's plenty to go around. No, I haven't. That would be great, thanks. It's almost ready. Riel, can you go set the table, please, sweetie? Asked Willa, handing Riel a bunch of silverware. Sure thing, Mama. Riel walked into the dining room with Scylla in tow. She closed the door over behind them before turning to the other girl. Sorry for the ambush. I thought she'd be at work. It's fine, said Scylla, taking some cutlery from Rael and helping her lay the table. I like your mom. She's nice. You say that now, but wait until the interrogation starts. Rael shook her head with a frown. Scylla smiled to herself. After dinner with Porter's parents, dinner with Rael's would be a welcome relief. Interrogation or not. Please find a fan fiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.